Hi everyone, in today's video we are going to be talking about Mavala hardeners, treatments for soft, weak, bendy nails. A lot of you guys were asking about what the differences are because they look very, very similar. They smell very similar too. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about them. And we're going to show you how they work. So what kind of nails are these products helpful? And this is where a lot of people make a big, big mistake because they think that these products will strengthen the nails and they won't strengthen them. They will harden them. And there is a big difference because the nails are made of keratin and what makes them strong is the cross linking in the nail. So nails that are very weak and bendy have actually less of those little cross links. And nails that are very, very hard actually have too many of those cross, cross links. And these products, they add cross links. So they will make hard nails even harder. They will make dry nails even drier. So very good product for the right type of nails. So what is the difference? So this is the original one called Mavala Scientific Nail Hardener. And this is the Mavala Scientific K plus pro keratin. So the, diff the main difference is this one as an active ingredient, it has formaldehyde 2%, 2.2%. And this one has dimethyl urea. So I know people think it's keratin or something, but there was, I don't think there was keratin. I actually, let's just look at the ingredients very, very quickly. Um, okay. So the first one has water, formaldehyde, alcohol, sodium lauryl sulfate, and some other nice looking ingredients. And the second one has water, dimethyl urea, alcohol. Uh, yeah, doesn't have any, doesn't have any keratin, which is fine because the keratin actually really doesn't do anything to the nails other than add maybe moisturization or something. But it's almost like when you are trying to add keratin on top of the nails, that's like trying to grow muscle by like rubbing your thigh with chicken breast. No, seriously, that's right. That's not how it works. So yes, it's protein, but that's not how, how it works. All right. So because the first one contains formaldehyde, a lot of people right away get freaked out because this, they think that formaldehyde really, really is, it's really, really bad for your nails, which shockingly, now you're going to be shocked. It actually doesn't have formaldehyde. <laughs> It has formalin. There was a big difference between formalin and formaldehyde. I am going to link a very, very interesting article written by Doug Shun about the differences between formaldehyde and formalin and how this whole mess started. So very quickly, kind of I'll recap for you, but please lead, read the whole article. It's super interesting. So what happened was initially they thought that when they mix formaldehyde with water, it's still formaldehyde that's just m dissolved in water, but that's not what happens. The second formaldehyde, which is a gas, is um, mixed with water, it becomes a completely diff different chemical, and that is actually a formalin. So formaldehyde is a gas. It has never been in nail polishes. Never. Polishes, the hardeners, may contain formalin, not formaldehyde, ever. So this is something that not too many people know about, so now you know. So formalin is actually a very safe ingredient when used properly, right? So make sure that you don't touch uh, the skin with this product and that you don't flood the nail so much that the product will soak in through the nail to the nail bed. And that's about it. And in cosmetics, formalin is allowed up to 5%, but majority of the companies actually put very, very small amount of the formalin in the product. This one is actually a little bit higher, it's 2.2, but it, a lot of companies have like 1.5 or 1% formalin, which still is label as, labeled as formaldehyde, but now you know it's not formaldehyde, it's actually formalin. Okay, let's get back to the product. So the main difference between formaldehyde and dimethylurea, they both add cross links to the nails. So they're both cross linking ingredients. The main difference is that the formalin works really, really fast. It's a very, very quick and aggressive cross linker. 
and you can actually overdo it. So what happens is very often people think that more is better. And once their nails starts getting, they start getting better, they think adding more is going to make them even better. But what happens is the opposite happens. You can actually overdo it and you can make your nails so brittle that they will actually shatter. So you don't want that because you want the nails to have a little bit of flexibility, but this product works really, really fast. And the instructions say to use this one. So this one says the, the one with the formalin says one to two applications a week to tips of the nails. And once you start seeing improvement, space it out. So maybe use it once a month or something like that. Now this product, it's actually difficult to find, find, um, treatments with dimethylurea. I don't know why, but it's quite difficult, difficult. So this one has dimethylurea, which is also, like I mentioned, a cross-linking ingredient, but it works much, much slower. So, and also you're not going to overdo it with this one. It's not going to cross-link to, um, to the point where the nails are going to be very, very brittle. So they're both good in my opinion. Um, they're both very safe. You just always have to make sure that you remember that you can get allergic reaction to, especially the formalin, but the allergic reactions are very, very rare and they are easily preventable by just not touching the skin with the product and not using these products on, uh, nails that are very, very damaged and thin because these products are the best to be used on nails that are naturally very, um, bendy and weak and very flexible. Not nails that are damaged or filed to the point that they're very um, weak, bendy and flexible, right? Because when the nail is that thin, the product can actually soak through the nail all the way through and, and irritate the nail bed. Okay, I hope that kind of explained majority of the, the questions. And now we're going to show you how they, how they look. So the reason why I like these products is that the, the application is very quick. There is nothing to dry really. Well, there is, but not like a nail polish and you can apply it a little bit more quicker than a nail polish. So sorry, more often than a nail polish. So now they both have, they look very, very similar and they, they're very liquidy. They look like a mouthwash or something. They smell minty. Very, very similar. Yeah, I don't smell any difference. Okay, so now let's use these products on these famous nails. Now, normally I would not use hardener on his nails because his nails are very good, healthy, but for the sake of this video, let's try. If they fall off, it's not going to be my fault. Yeah. Okay, so first make sure that your hands are nice and clean. And I would wipe the nails with, with alcohol or with prep. Okay, let's do these two. Just to make sure that the product has a chance to absorb into the nail plate, because that's how it works. And by the way, the difference between these products and other nail polishes that are called hardeners is that these will permanently change the structure of your nail until they grow out obviously right and other polishes will strengthen the nails very often by just adding coats and once you remove the polish the nail is the same okay so let's use the one with the formalin so make sure you know i really like the fact that these bottles are not very wobbly okay so make sure you, you drain the brush really, really well. Okay, why is this so foamy now? Of course, it's going to be so foamy. Okay. And now they say apply it on, on a tip, but then in the video they're showing to apply it like from the middle down. So I would say it's pretty safe to apply it like this. And I would just very, very and now when you apply it on all five nails, just point them down just so the, the product doesn't seep into the, into the surrounding skin. Although you should never have that much that it would just be soaking into the skin, right? So this one, I find it dries a little bit quicker. I would say like a minute or something. And now let's use the other one. So this one is the one with dimethylurea. 
Make sure you drain the brush really well. And usually this amount is enough for all the nails. Okay. Again, point your fingers down, let this dry. So this one is almost dry. So usually they say a minute, but I find it's usually like a one to two minutes. Okay, and in case you are wondering who Mr. Doug Shun is, he's actually a very cool guy. I met him quite a few times. And here he is. So Doug Shun is an internationally recognized scientist, author, and educator with over 30 years experience in the cosmetic beauty and personal care industry. He is a leading industry authority known for his technical and regulatory work that has helped shape the beauty industry. Doug has authored several books, video and audio training programs, as well as dozen of, dozens of magazine articles about salon product safety and best practices for salon professionals. Author of science and safety books for beauty professionals, including the industry standard, nail structure and product chemistry, chemistry, which I actually have all three books, even signed by Doug Shun. And he also had a face-to-face -face, um, with Doug Shun, um, what would you call it? An internet series. Dude. Wow. Exactly. So that's Doug Shun. So let's just test if I was right about this. So he says the most effective nail hardeners contain keratin cross-linking ingredients. Formaldehyde is a very aggressive and fast acting keratin cross-linker. Aggressive cross-linkers work quickly because they create very large amount of cross-links. Excessive use of these hardeners can result in overly cross-linked nail plates. Over close <laughs> Over cross-linking often makes the nail plate look dried and might lead to chipping and shattering or the underlying nail bed might turn bluish or red. In these cases, the client should discontinue using this particular product until the new nail growth replaces the damaged nail plate and then use the hardener much less frequently to prevent overexposure. The other nail hardeners use less aggressive keratin cross-linking ingredients such as dimethyl urea which will not overly cross-link nails or make them brittle and then he talks about the allergies that we just have to make sure that there is no skin contact and that's that's about it and the article i'm just going quickly to sh i'm going to show you how the article looks like it's on his website shunscientific.com exposing the formaldehyde myth and here you go he has he explains everything uh, very easily very easy um, read it will blow your mind super interesting information already guys i'm very curious if you decide to buy one of these products please let me know which one you decide to buy i'm very curious which one you would choose i personally i'm a little bit impatient i would choose the first one because I like how quickly it works and I think I would be careful with not overusing it. But again, everybody's different. The ones with formalin, I don't think are available in Europe. So if you're in Europe, you don't have a choice, I guess, by you have to get this one. Both of them are excellent. I highly recommend them. We have the links to these both products in the description box below. They're affiliate links. We really appreciate if you could buy them through our links. It really helps the channel. That's it. For the for today's video we hope you found it interesting and helpful we'll see you soon and bye recording 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 we're ready to go crazy hey we're gonna do it it's gonna be a great video okay be positive we're gonna finish it today or is it gonna be like a three-day adventure adventures adventures okay okay all right Hi everyone, in today's video. No? What? Okay. Am I supposed to say something? No. Okay, very good. And regulatory, <laughs> regulatory work that has helped shape the beauty industry. Doug has authored seven books, several. Dog has, dog. Dog. <laughs> That's it for the, for today's video. We hope you found it interesting and helpful. We'll see you soon. Bye.